Okay, so now we're at the point where we got these jobs coming in, right? We hired 10, 15 new sales guys. Jobs are piling into production. Guys are showing up, picking up ACV checks at the kitchen table, correct? Is this, an important, this is an important time to train your sales guys on how to formally contract the job correctly. How many, how many kitchen tables do you guys sit at with new salespeople uh, teaching them how to do it the right way? Is it, is, it, is it a considerable time investment? Certainly is, especially when you run around 10 guys. So, formally contracting a job, this also leads into AR. Profitability, cash flow, and AR start here. It has a lot to do with the contract terms and the language in your contracts. And so I don't know what forms you guys use individually to contract jobs, but there should be at least three or four documents that are usually two-part contracts that a customer signs when you pick up a check and contract a job. So we're gonna go over to some of those contracts that we use. Some are in this packet, we're gonna talk about them, but we're, we're gonna talk specifically about the consistent language that's in them that'll increase your cash flow and your, your AR issues later on. Reducing production nightmares later on as well. Okay, we utilize, and you'll notice this, uh, if, you, if you look into our phase two sales training system, which consists of all these job documents, these are all brand your own job, job documents, by the way, that we send to contractors, these are templates. A construction contract, which is not what? It's not the contingency agreement, remember the contingency agreement? This is a real construction contract, it actually has real construction information, warranty and stuff on the back. A PPD sheet, which we've created, which allows accounting to figure out what credits you're giving back to the homeowner, what deductions, what upgrades. Uh, a scope of work addendum, which allows your production manager to know what, what the heck we're uh, doing on the job. A pre-start checklist, which reduces liability. Mortgage affidavit, we oftentimes got to get at the customer set, because nine times out of ten we're dealing with the mortgage company, correct? And pre-lien notices. In some states, a pre-lien, like Minnesota, is required. Okay, so I'm not going to get, this isn't a construction one-on-one -on -one class. I'm going to assume most of you guys know how to contract a job. But the language in the back of our contracts, there's some things that we include. You ever guys remember my Miami, Florida story of collecting AR, the nightmares? Well, this, this, this was born out of that chaos. And so there's three specific things you want to make sure are in the back of your contract if they're not there. One is... Uh, percentage of completion billing policy. This is a simple statement to include on the back where company reserves the right to bill proportionally for percentage of work complete. Customer understands that a stop work order may not be issued, may be issued if a requested progress payment is not met. What that does is allows you as an owner or production manager in cases where somebody may have received a large ACV check or a large commercial job you don't want to be stuck with a 50% down, 50% upon completion on a $1.2 million apartment complex, do you? No. You can if you have a whole lot of cash flow and, you don't, and, and things are going good, but in, in, in tough times, you, gotta have, you have to have the ability to collect on a percentage of completion. It's, this is really construction 101. We get, a, we get real used to an insurance restoration doing, hey, first check down, half check upon completion. That works on small jobs, but when you get into larger jobs, that mentality could break you, you know, in, the, in a world of cash flow. So you always want to have... Look, on small jobs, we don't even exercise this, but it's naturally in all our contracts in case we choose to exercise it. Um, and, and, and that works in a number of reasons. You know, we had a, I had a job in uh, Miami, Flor Miami, Florida that was a large townhome association. And we were, back then, we did 50% down or whatever the ACV check was and arrest upon completion. And we ran into several large commercial jobs where people were literally holding, you know, we'd finish a, we'd finish a million dollar roofing project and they, wouldn't, they weren't going to pay us a dime until we also finished the specialty copper, copper gutters and th three or four windows that got paid for. Well, the windows were two months out on special order. Copper gutters were another 30 days out. And here we were a million dollars, you know, we were six, seven hundred thousand dollars on labor minute to us. So we introduced this concept to simply reserve the right to bill proportionally on, on a percentage of completion. This should be in everybody's contract. So if it's not there now, just take a look at it in your next contract print. Make sure you have some of these in there. They'll save your butt later on. 